ओके वेलकम बैक टू द सीरीज ऑफ मॉड्यूल 15 इन दिस दिस पर्टिकुलर सीरीज विल बी वेरी शॉर्ट वन ओके आई एम जस्ट क्विकली गोइंग थ्रू फोर पॉइंट्स इन अंडर परफॉर्मेंस द लास्ट पार्ट दैट हैव डिस्कस्ड वाज आल्सो रिगार्डिंग परफॉर्मेंस बट समथिंग वाज लेफ्ट इन दैट सो लेट अस जस्ट क्विकली गो थ्रू दिस फोर पॉइंट्स सो वट आर दीज सी वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट सम एफिशियंसीज द वेरी फर्स्ट वन इज अ थर्मल एफिशियंसी नाउ वी नो दैट इट इज अ थर्मल इंजिन राइट थर्मल मीन्स इट इज समथिंग दैट इज रिलेटेड टू हीट ओके सो इट इज वर्किंग बेस्ड ऑन हीट सो थर्मल एफिशियंसी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन केस इन केस ऑफ एनी हीट इंजन सो वॉट इज दैट नाउ वेयर आर वी गेटिंग द हीट फ्रॉम वी आर गेटिंग इट फ्रॉम द फ्यूएल ओके राइट सो फ्यूएल वी आर बाइंग विथ आर ओन मनी एंड वी आर बर्निंग इट एंड वी आर फाइनली गेटिंग सम हीट एनर्जी राइट सो दैट हीट एनर्जी इज देन कन्वर्टेड इन टू मेकेनिकल एनर्जी एंड थ्रस्ट एंड वेरियस अदर थिंग्स so we should be concerned about the particular efficiency otherwise we will never come to know that whatever the money that we are spending behind buying that fuel and utilizing it whatever the fuel we are utilizing for a particular journey so how much is actually being utilized okay so to in order to know that we need to know the thermal efficiency now it is a prime factor in gas turbine performance it is basically the ratio of the net work output produced by the engine to the chemical energy supplied in the form of fuel okay so it is like what work you have got what work output you have got from the engine and how much of fuel energy you have given to the engine that is what energy you have got as output and what energy you have given to the engine as fuel energy or as fuel okay that means what was the potential energy of that fuel how much of heat energy was actually contained in that fuel okay so that's the ratio now three most important factors which actually uh, you know affects this particular efficiency that is thermal efficiency first one is the turbine inlet temperature that is the temperature uh, with which the hot gases will go and strike the first stage of turbine okay before leaving the engine so that is the first stage of turbine remember the turbine inlet temperature by the word we can understand ki the temperature that is at the inlet of the turbine fine then what is their compression ratio what is compression ratio i'll tell you okay and uh, it is basically in short if i say compression ratio is the pressure difference okay what is the inlet temper uh, pressure before being compressed and what is the uh, pressure after being compressed okay that is the pressure before the inlet or at the inlet of the compressor and the outlet of the compressor that is called the compression ratio fun there is a pressure pressure ratio basically between the first uh, stage of the compressor and the last stage of the compressor okay then we have got component efficiencies now what is component efficiency component over here is basically two two components we know one is a composed compressor another one is a turbine right so need this are mechanical things they are having blades right so they will rotate so if they rotate in that case they will definitely have some efficiency right if they rotate very smoothly they will have a very smooth efficiency they will have a high efficiency if they rotate very uh, slow with too much of drag and if it's too heavy okay that means a lot of lot of work will be utilized in rotating them because they are very heavy okay so that is a problem so that means there will be low efficiency in such compressors and turbines which are very heavy and cannot be moved so easily by hot gases so you have to have such type of components like compressors and turbines which will utilize less power but it will uh, rotate more or create more torque basically which we need fine so that's it so these are the things which will uh, depend on this particular thing next we will quickly go to what are the effects uh, that will be there on the compressor and turbine component efficiency have on thermal efficiency when turbine and compressor inlet temperatures remain constant okay as shown in this graphs okay basically this graphs if you go through you will have a clear idea about like what is there okay how thermal efficiency is varying with compression ratio how thermal efficiency is varying with compression ratio of uh, you know efficiencies of the compressor and turbine and then uh, what is the turbine inlet temperature uh, and turbine bucket life means turbines blades life okay turbine bucket life bucket means blades over here okay turbine blades and buckets are same so what is the turbine blade life in hours that is how many hours the engine have run so accordingly that uh, how many hours it can actually um, work for more 
uh, few few more flights so it is a counting that is done okay manufacturers will be having an idea like as it is a hot section so uh, there are chances like uh, the blades may get eroded they may get damaged due to high heat so after what interval that should be replaced okay that should be discarded and new blade should be fit into the engine so that is totally depending on the turbine inlet temperature if there is too high temperature then the blades will be very easily damaged right so even before the actual hours are reached the blade is already damaged before that it will become very weak okay it will lose all its heat treatment whatever whatever type of things that have been done on it all its hardness tempering and everything will be gone okay so turbine inlet temperature is a very important thing it it measures the life of the components of an engine okay it cannot be too high it cannot be too less also we will discuss those anyway so uh, okay so since engine life is greatly reduced at high turbine inlet temperatures so the operator should not exit exit the particular exhaust gas temperature okay there is a marking like you should not increase uh, or your exhaust gas temperature should not reach this particular value this particular temperature let's say uh, the maximum is 800 degree celsius so it should not reach more than 800 if it crosses 800 there will be uh, you know alarms and alerts and cash messages and all these things will come in the cockpit that uh, such and such problems are happening uh, your temperature is too high okay that means you need to immediately decrease the speed so that the temperature goes with down right otherwise the blades will be uh, too hot and they will eventually either crack or break there may be waviness in the blades and so many other problems can happen okay which is a fatal fatal thing i mean that can cause a huge uh, accident anyway uh, then uh, this is a practical application of the tur turbine engine it becomes necessary to analyze the effects of heading inlet conditions now what are the inlet conditions on which uh, that is the air that is coming into the engine okay how can that particular air have some impact on the thrust and the power produced now there are three things okay first thing is the speed of the aircraft second is the altitude of the aircraft and third is the ambient temperature so these three things together will be called as stagnation density remember this these are the dgca questions you know from these lines what will be taken is what is stagnation density or what are the components of stagnation density it is stagnation density means it is the speed of the aircraft it is the altitude of the aircraft and it is the ambient temperature of the aircraft which means ambient temperature means your local temperature so let's say a aircraft is flying at 20000 feet okay so that is the altitude it is flying let's say with uh, 1 mac for example i'm saying or maybe 0.8 mac okay or 0.5 mac so that is the speed of the aircraft and what is the ambient temperature for example minus 25 degree minus 30 degree okay so these three things together will have some particular density of the air with such climatic conditions with these three things the air density will be a fixed value right so if any one of these things will vary like if the speed increases or the outside air temperature decreases or increases or if the you know altitude increases or decreases then there will be an impact on the density there will be an impact on the air density now we know that if there is more air that means it is more denser right so more the air means more the mass and we know from the force formula it is mass into acceleration so more the mass more will be the force or thrust right so we need to maintain one thing that this density should be high always if this density is very high in that case we can get a very high thrust fine so power produced by a turbine engine is proportional to this density it's clearly written over here okay so these are the small small dgc questions that can come okay so what is power depending upon it is depending upon the stagnation density i'm repeating it again stagnation density power and thrust is depending on stagnation density fine so what are the next three illustrations that we should which we should actually see or rather we should actually understand that how one by one now we are discussing how is altitude how is air speed and how is uh, the outside air temperature is actually you know creating the effects now see uh, uh, if you consider the uh, okay now if you if you consider that any uh, this increase occurs partly because the energy required per pound of airflow to drive the compressor varies directly with the temperature leaving more energy to develop thrust now in addition the thrust output increases since the air at reduced temperature has an increased density now see the first thing is the temperature if the temperature if among all these three things of that stagnation density if the temperature decreases 
then we know what will happen is the moment temperature will decrease all the molecules will come closer right all the air molecules will come closer so the density will automatically increase so which means lesser the temperature more will be the density okay so more will be the thrust right equally now imagine the altitude effect what is the altitude effect if the altitude increases there will be two effects now first we read that less the temperature lesser the temperature more the thrust okay because of more the uh, air density but over here the problem is over here the problem is if the altitude increases for example i'm giving you two cases only we know that there are, there will be two variations of pressure and temperature both when altitude varies right so at lower altitude like in uh, let's say in standard altitude like at the airport and all there is certain pressure certain temperature we know something called lapse rate we have all read in aerodynamics lapse rate that at every 1000 <coughs> sorry at every 1000 feet when you go up there is a decrease decrement of 2 degrees celsius right if i go 1000 feet uh, climb to 1000 feet there will be 2 degree less temperature than the then 0 feet okay let's say if it is 15 here then it will be 13 after 1000 feet then it will be 11 after 2000 feet it will be 9 degree at 3000 feet it will be 7 degree at 4000 feet just like that 2 degree will be decreasing at each 1000 feet when we climb so equally the pressure will also decrease right we also know the pressure also decreases when we go up there is a low pressure so temperature decreases pressure also decreases now at certain now now we have to <coughs> understand what is having more impact whether it is the temperature or is it the pressure which is decreasing more faster okay uh, sorry which is decreasing faster so the pressure decreases faster by the time we reach to a certain level even before the temperature slowly goes down okay uh, the pressure de decreases almost half of it whatever the pressure it was almost half of the pressure will decrease very quickly which means pressure is having more impact now imagine if pressure is having more impact then ultimately how will pressure affect the density of air that as we increase high up the pressure decreases more than the temperature so we should only consider the pressure more than the temperature even if the temperature decreases the molecules may be coming closer okay the density may increase but the problem is the pressure is even more lower so the pressure will have more impact if the pressure is less we know that the air density will also be less because it it depends on the pressure M the more you pressurize some air more will be its density more will be the number of molecules in a small space so if there is less pressure there will be less density of air okay so which means altitude will decrease the thrust right so what we read that if there is a decrement in temperature thrust will increase if there is a increment in altitude thrust will decrease okay two things we read now we are going to air speed now see uh, okay along with this i'll also discuss ram recovery okay what is air speed now see air speed is basically the speed with which you are flying fine so when you are flying for example it is said when you are flying now we know what is the thrust thrust is basically the out output velocity of the engine minus input velocity right by time it is a rate of change of velocity we know so that is acceleration basically so it depends on the acceleration now let's imagine the mass is constant that is flowing the mass of air that is flowing through the engine is constant now you are flying okay you are flying with medium speed now your exhaust velocity is very high as compared to your inlet velocity which means v2 is more than v1 that means you will have a very fast acceleration right so you will be get, getting more thrust now you imagine you are developing the same v2 the exhaust velocity is still same but you are going very fast okay which means now what you have done is you have increased the power you increase the throttle the engine is still producing lot of thrust but that velocity is comparatively same only it is not that much the changes changes are not that much observed because that's how the engine is designed okay it cannot reach supersonic suddenly even if you try so but you are still trying you are still going very fast because now you are going very fast because more thrust is produced so if more thrust is produced now that is your v uh, you know v 
टू इज हाई बट वी वन इज ऑल्सो हाई ओवर हियर बिकॉज यू आर गोइंग वेरी फास्ट द इनलेट वेलासिटी दैट दैट इज हिटिंग यू फ्रॉम द फ्रंट दैट इज दैट ऑल्सो इंक्रीजेस वेन यू गो हाई विथ हाई स्पीड राइट सो नाउ द डिफरेंस बिटवीन वी टू एंड वी वन डिक्रीजेस विच मीन्स द एक्सेलेशन डिक्रीजेस right see if you have a very high front uh, air coming and hitting you and if you have a very high uh, if you have almost same amount of uh, uh, air leaving from leaving behind you okay so the difference is very less so you will not feel that huge difference or huge acceleration right so that means the thrust will decrease so eventually which means that if temperature decreases thrust will increase if altitude increases thrust will decrease and if air speed increases then also the thrust will decrease fine these are the three things please read this particular paragraph you will understand very easily just remember the three points i have told you okay how actually thrust depends or power depends on these three things now next coming to ram recovery okay this is the second point ram recovery means what now imagine your aircraft is on the ground and it is producing some thrust okay the engine is being done ground run is going on engine is producing some thrust so the air that is hitting the engine it is at stagnation level means it is at st- uh, you know normal level you are not moving forward okay chocks are on now you are removing the chocks and the aircraft goes forward the moment the aircraft st- starts moving some amount of thrust is increased obviously because unless the thrust is increased the aircraft cannot go forward but as soon as you go forward to some extent you know what will happen the f- air that is coming from front will cause drag right so we know that the thrust the enemy of thrust is drag right the enemy of thrust is drag so if thrust is increased okay the moment we move forward initially the, the that line is also given here initially the thrust will increase okay but as you move forward after a couple of while the thrust will decrease as compared to the drag that is being produced okay but when you take off or when you at a cruise level then what happen is then what will happen is your speed is increased to way too high as compared to ground okay so now whatever the air that is coming and causing the drag that same air will now come inside the inlet the drag will still be produced but that air will cause or rather increase a lot of pressure at the inlet which will assist your compressor okay it will automatically compress some air due to that huge drag in front of the inlet so that is assisting the compressor in developing more pressure fine so that increment of that pressure will add or you know benefit your thrust amount will add up to your thrust amount or that will benefit the thrust production fine so that is called ram recovery which means it is a ram air that is coming from the front will recover your thrust that you are losing previously in the ground or maybe at low speed due to the drag drag okay so what happens repeating one more time when you are at ground level aircraft is not moving engine is running it is having a different scenario now the moment you starts moving there is a bit increment of thrust otherwise you cannot move forward right but immediately when you take a you know take off roll or anything in, on the ground there is a drag very uh, huge drag that will co- cause less thrust to produce fine but the moment you increase your speed and way go all the way high and uh, you know go up and then finally you start cruising that huge speed that you have developed due to that there will be a increment of pressure in the inlet section of the engine okay air will come and get pressurized in that area due to that huge uh, speed of the aircraft so that increment of pressure will help your thrust to produce more okay so that is called ram recovery means you are recovering the pressure loss or you are recovering the uh drag loss losses okay by the help of the ram air by the help of this pressurization of the ram air so that is called ram recovery you are recovering the thrust by the help of ram air remember that that is called ram recovery okay you read it you will understand i'm telling you it's it's very very easy things okay you just need to understand whatever i'm telling you please you'll hear it at least twice and then you read the particular uh, paragraph it will be easy for you 
engine rating the uh, third thing and then i'll go to the last point engine rating is basically see it is nothing it is basically the power rating okay or thrust rating means manufacturer when they make one engine they know that at certain altitude at certain level at certain conditions of the flight this should be the optimum power output nothing more than that nothing less than that okay or it may have some range very small range within which it can fluctuate but nothing more or less otherwise it's extreme points okay less is also not good more is also not good fine more is definitely not good that will have, you know destroy the engine let's say too much of excessive uh, exhaust gas temperature produced which means very high temperature developed inside the engine and engine can any time start you know there may be burning uh, the blades may melt right they may break off and many things can happen so certain ratings are there and we should not cross those ratings now these ratings will basically depends on few things like see what are the operating conditions on which it will depend take off during take off there will be different engine ratings engine thrust parameters oil quantity flows and so many things will be there okay maximum continuous climb which means what is the climb when you climb you require a lot of power during take off and climb you require a lot of power so during climb what you require that also changes okay your thrust requirement changes because huge load initially you are lifting a huge load okay so that also increases right so the thrust will thrust requirement will be different at that time now you are at cruise means you have taken off and you are now steady and straight and level flight you are going you are simply cruising now so your thrust par parameters will automatically go down if you check the engine uh, health monitoring data and you know engine status data time to time then you will understand these values okay thrust will slowly go down during the cruise phase okay that much of thrust is no more required because now you are not taking off now you are not climbing okay your angle of attack is very low okay you are just simply flying straight and level flight so you don't require so much of thrust so these are the engine ratings okay depending on the particular type of conditions of the flight okay now a higher rigidity corresponds to a large amount of energy to the turbine so it can turn the compressor faster so egt is one of those that you need can you know keep on track whether your egt is increasing too much or whether you have the perfect egt for a perfect perfect take off or not fine uh so all throughout the flight we need to just check one thing that in egt may be less but may not be more having more egt means it's a dangerous thing always remember exhaust gas temperature increases means turbine inlet temperature is very high because before the air goes to the exhaust it will go through the turbine no so turbine inlet will be definitely higher as compared to the exhaust gas temperature if the temperature produced in the turbine inlet is 800 then the exhaust gas will be 650 or 700 so that much difference will be there or it may be even less also less than than that okay so if exhaust gas only becomes very high that means turbine inlet temperature is even higher right so that cannot be uh, you know uh, endured by the engine so that is not a good thing fine okay now going to the last point this talks about engine pressure ratio what is engine pressure ratio it is basically a ratio between the inlet engine pressure and the outlet exhaust pressure in the entire engine entire engine section i am talking about at the inlet what is your pressure before the compression and after uh, temp turbine or during at at the exhaust what is the pressure obviously the pressure should be more only then there will be uh, increment of thrust because the thrust will thrust is a force so force will depend on pressure right so if more the pressure then we have will have more for force because force formula is what force is equals to uh, sorry pressure formula is what force by area so if you have more pressure which means more force is there acting on less area which means that uh, these two pressures are basically sensed in the engine okay so there are two sensors one is a p2 sensor another one is a p7 sensor remember these two generally for all engines it is almost same okay it is called p2 sensor and p7 sensor now what p why p2 and p7 it is, these are the stages there are more sensors also in between there is a p1 sensor at the inlet what is the inlet air pressure okay then just before the engine compressor it is the p2 sensor then after the compressor it is p3 sensor then at diffuser it is p4 after combustion chamber at inlet it is different then one by one the last stage will have p7 
okay it may be p8 for some engine it may be p6 for some engine but generally it is p2 and p7 so these two differences that is the inlet pressure which is p2 that is very less as compared to p7 so generally what is the uh, pressure ratio the ratio between these two pressures will be sensed by these two sensors and then there is a gauge called epr gauge in modern aircraft you will get epr values or epr ratio uh, on the screen itself on your monitor itself okay in the ecas or ecam it will come and this epr just like exhaust gas temperature this is also a parameter which tells you about the thrust okay in some engines you see it's written very clearly in some engines if you set the epr reading that such and such epr is required for takeoff for our certain uh, other conditions of the flight so that can give exactly that much of thrust okay depending on your epr setting in the engine you can control the thrust of the engine which means epr egt fuel uh, flow all these things and also rpm engine rpm all these things are the most important parameters to judge the thrust produced by the engine remember this this is the dgca questions what are the things on which thrust will basically depend on thrust will depend on your egt exhaust gas temperature more the temperature more the thrust more the engine pressure ratio epr more the thrust okay uh, better the um, you know um, uh, that is uh, better the rpm okay that is n1 rpm and n2 rpm n1 and n2 i already told you n1 is the first pool first compre low pressure compressor low pressure turbine that shaft and n2 is the high pressure compressor high pressure turbine shaft so what is the percentage of rpm they have that is another parameter that also is being checked for the thrust okay these things together give a particular value at a particular thrust level or at a particular thrust requirement so from thrust requirement point of view if the thrust varies then any one of these or any two of these or all the three parameters that is egt epr and rpm this can vary fine so that is all about this chapter please go through these points it's very very easy only thing is just revise it properly go through these diagrams that are given on the right side okay you find any doubt quickly go through the video one by one okay all the points and just uh, if if once it is not clear then you just listen to it twice it will be definitely clear for you okay still if you have doubt raise queries in the in whatsapp or raise queries in youtube i'll answer no issues thank you so much